Welcome to today's video. I am currently chilling in the K-Van. I've got a bunch of parts in the back that we don't need anymore from like, you know, Chase's old seat rails and engine mounts and stuff like that, that we've gone and upgraded a quite a while ago. And I don't have the space for that kind of stuff lying around my shop and I have no use for it in the future, I don't think. So we're gonna sell it at Up Garage. So we're gonna pick things up once we're there. We just arrived and uh, I'm loving this wheel set up out the front. Got some cool things. These really grippy, what are these, uh, Achilles? I think in Australia, these were like the one, two, three S's or something. Really nice. The ATR K Sports. This is really cool. 10J Steelies. Damn, they look awesome. Some of the, oh, these are kind of same thing. Interesting. Sometimes I find like some, ooh, these VS's look nice. Three piece. Not too bad. Sizing's 9.5 plus 31, so that's a really good like skyline offset. Pretty good. Anyways, we're gonna walk around and check out everything that they have for sale today, but first I need to go check in and get my ticket for the stuff that we're selling. It's just some stuff that I don't need anymore, like I said. Uh, we got some rear TN coilovers from the Chaser, seat rails, engine mounts, just basic stuff. Oh, by the way, my gates came in for the SRs that we're doing the new hot side on. Parts are all finally starting to rock up. Nice turbo smart comp gate, 40 mil. These things are so awesome. They flow uh, as if it was like a 60 mil gate, even though it's 40 mil. Super excited about those. So we're gonna get all this stuff all cashed in, let you know how much we get for it. Put down in the comment section how much you think we're gonna get for rear shocks, two seat rails, and uh, engine mounts for a JZX100. All of this stuff works. It's just worn out and old. So let's see. I reckon at least like 25 bucks. I know that's not much, but I mean, I'm not expecting much. We dropped off all the parts and I couldn't help but check out this nice 31 GTS here. Absolutely beautiful. Nice two door as well. And then on the other side of this truck, really nice S15 spec R. Beautiful. And there's also a nice mini over here. Look at that. That's cool. Always some cool cars in the car park here. All right, let's get inside and have a look at the parts. Just checking out the uh, brake and clutch section over here. I'm not gonna lie, I always get super salty in the brake section here because they have a lot of really cool brake kits. But they're like all for Subarus. I have no idea why. They do get some pretty cool brake kits in here. But why are they all Subarus? Is there something I don't know about? <laughs> what have we got over here? A few transmissions. ND Roadster. NC Roadster, that's funny. So there's a ND, so this is like the new Miata, the ND Miata or MX-5, depending on where you're from in the world. And then this is the NC, both like two models side-by-side -side manual transmissions. This is interesting, the ND transmission is so different from the NC. What is this plate here? It's kind of funny. What is this auto? That looks like uh, a stock Jay-Z auto transmission. Pretty sure that's what that is. There's nothing, no marking on it. Obviously we got a like a 32 GTR all wheel drive box. $300, yeah, 32 GTR. Not bad. We got another Auto Trans here. This is from an NB Roadster or MX-5. That's funny, man. There's a lot of Miata transmission stuff here. I wonder if like a shop that works on a lot of Miatas just dumped a bunch of stuff here. I mean, that's what everyone does. This looks like... I have no idea what kind of control arms that is. Du double wishbone setup. Definitely not a Skyline though, that's for sure. Something Toyota probably. And just usual kind of diff stuff. We've got an R200 4.3. Ooh. 4.3 R200 from a 32 Skyline apparently? It's got the stock diff in there. Only a hundred bucks? Oh. It's got a lot of backlash though. Probably gonna give that a hard miss. I mean, these will bolt into like a Sylvia no problem. You just gotta get the bolts for them because they don't have the bush. Hmm, good to know that's there though. I am looking for a 4.3, so maybe we can take the pinion and crown out of that for a hundred dollars. That's not a bad deal. Let's see what we got in this aisle. Normally some good stuff. I, I did clean mine on the S15 the other day and a whole bunch of stuff came out of it But we're not going to be using that kind of air filter uh, With the new setup. That's for sure 
You don't see much. We've got a pair of uh, JZ880 Supra twins here. $150 for the factory twin setup. It's cheap as. We've still got that Pulsar uh, SR20 turbo kit here from the uh, GTIR. Looks like they got like a what, 180SX, no, R34. What that can't be right. Really? OP6 turbos? I mean, it's been a while since I've seen an OP6 turbo. I didn't remember. I didn't remember them being that small. There you go. Two hundred and fifty dollars for uh, Neo Six RB25 uh, R34 GTT turbo. That's actually really cheap. We got a fair few OEM turbos here at the moment. That's a JZX100 Chaser. Two hundred dollars for a good second-hand one. That's definitely a 180SX turbo. It's got to be three, yeah, yeah, S13. It's like the red top, black top turbos look so small in comparison to like a, uh, so you think of a turbo, uh, that's another 180SX one there. That's tiny it is. See if they have another one here. They're very, they're bigger than this almost, the S14, S15 ones. They don't have one. But yeah, obviously the VCT engines, because they had VCT, they could put a bit more of a bigger turbo on there, so. They look a little bit like, uh, so twins from a GTR here, a 260RS. This is more of the same size, uh, same turbo that was on the the VCTSR. So you can see much bigger. Well, let's see what else we can find. I decided to come to the seat aisle to see what seat rails are selling for. And this just blows my mind that they can still sell something like this for $60. Like, this thing is dead. Like, proper dead. And the crazy thing is, is someone will still buy this. Like, there's no cushions in this at all. I mean, you got a missile and you need something. You, that's perfect, right? Or a sim rig or something. So, I'm a bit worried. I don't know if we're going to get much today. Like, a lot of these seat rails are like $30. Like, 3,000 yen each. Some, like, more rare ones are like 7,000. But, you know, they've got to make money. So, they're going to probably buy those off me for like maybe 1,000 yen if I'm lucky. I don't know if we're going to get at least 25 bucks. We'll find out. They called my number, we managed to get a lousy $15 for all that stuff we got. Uh, I think we got we got $5 for the rear coilovers because the rubber bushes in the bottom like uh, mount were completely destroyed. And then the engine mounts we actually got $10 for. Both of the seat rails, they're junk, they're gonna just throw them in the bin because uh, apparently the seat belt like holder tabs were cut off with an angle grinder. So they just weren't gonna work. And they can't sell that because that's unsafe. And I had no idea that was done to them, so eh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We got $15 for stuff that was, I was trying to just get rid of and throw in the bin anyways, so win-win there. With that aside, you guys know I always like to check for some wheels. Um, I'm after a really clean, naughty classic. That is a really nice old school Momo there. Um, they have a bunch of wood grain naughties here, actually. This is kind of really nice. This one too. Um, and they have this huge, this is a 360, yeah, 365 Naughty Classic in all black. Oh, they have a GTR OEM one there that's got a whole bunch of scratches on it. They want $250 for it. But yeah, no really clean Naughties here, unfortunately. I always check here because nine times out of ten you find one. There's another wood grain, huge Naughty one there. Oh, 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 oh. 330 mil. Oh man, it's too, just a bit too damaged. Um, this is the, the exact one I'm looking for too. Oh yeah, look, oh wow, yeah. Bit of damage up here. Yeah, no. Bummer. Oh, big sad, big sad. I thought that I was gonna be taking that home today. There's another wood grain one there too. Damn it. I'm looking for a really clean naughty classic for around $250. And I want to put that in my S15. Anyways, that aside, I'm happy. Ooh, we need to check exhaust stuff in case they have the exhaust I want for my Skyline. Looking for one of those old, like, HKS high power ones. Not the high power silent, just the high power ones. They're, like, three to four inch all the way through with, like, no crazy restriction, restricted mufflers. You can still buy them brand new. They just have, like, a massive wait time of, like, six weeks. Yeah, it doesn't look like they've got any. I see them... They stick out like a sore thumb. They have this big square flange where like the, what on earth is this? <laughs> what 
What kind of flange is that? It's like one, two, it's, that is so bizarre. I've never seen an exhaust flange that goes onto the back of a muffler like that. That was weird. Anyways, uh, the HKS one I'm looking for is like a big square flange here, not a slip-on. Anyways, I think uh, I'm gonna go check out what wheels are available and we'll go from there. Maybe there's uh, also some JZX100 lights here that I can uh, send a fuss to. Oh, that's right. The chaser is currently being fixed right now. So in probably a week or so, we're gonna start seeing some more chaser content and Matsuri this the end of this month. So fingers crossed we don't uh, we don't crash that thing again. Although I hear Nishi Short's gonna be open again. So we need to do a big update video on all the progress of repairs at Ebisu Circuit. So we'll go up there way early before Matsuri do some seat time practice, make sure the car's all good and give you guys a nice update video of what's going on up there. Um, but I'm excited. And also there's still a high chance we're gonna crash the chaser because Nishi Short will be open. And that's where we crashed it the first time. So <laughs> definitely gonna be reckless this Matsuri. Nice 33 beta rolling in. Love that uh, rear bumper damage. Got up close to a wall or guardrail somewhere. Nice. Love me a good skyline beta. Whew. Dude, I'm all about that. We need to get another 33. Like just, just stock, put a, like a high flow turbo on there from GCG and just a missile beta. You know what I mean? Something we can just do stuff with. Sadly, nothing good in the wheel section. Pretty much all the same, same stuff. Let's go get to the shop, go get the S15 loaded up and everything ready there. I can't wait to take that thing for a drive and just, like the thing starts and you don't hear an exhaust leak from the manifold right now. Um, I am sure it's not gonna be the same after the race, but at least right now there's no exhaust leak on the car. So let's jump on in it and then I think later tonight I definitely wanna go to Big Bang and do some uh, go-kart drifting and have some fun. Just kind of wind down before we gotta go uh, do some time attack tomorrow. <laughs> Woo. There she is. I'm also super hyped because I found out today the new LED lighting is finally on its way. So uh, we'll have to uh, work out where to hire one of those like scissor lift things because this place is going to be lit up brighter than the sun when we're done with it. Also, at the same time I can start putting all my shop banners up and stuff on the wall. Anyways, I'm hyped because we get to drive this thing right now. Um, I do need to do just a few things to probably need to raise it at least another centimeter and stuff like that. So I'm going to quickly smash that out just so I know that we've got the clearance and whatnot for driving this thing around on the street. Um, but otherwise... We are ready. And uh, I gotta clean up and organize my tools and bring everything that we'll need for a, a track day. I don't think I need to bring everything because we're not drifting, but um, just some basic stuff like ramps and jacks and you know basic tools. Like you know if I have to still raise the front some more and things like that, I think it's a good idea to bring all that kind of stuff. So anyways, let's get this done. So I finished doing a bit of modifications. I had to... Uh, Trim a little bit in here just for a bit more clearance so the 265s don't touch the fenders or the side skirts when uh, turning. And I got all the center caps on now and I wanted to save the last peel for you guys. So let's get that started. Whew. If you're wondering why the Koenig is sideways, because I've been matching the logo on the center caps to the logo on the wheel. So that when they kind of, you know what I'm saying, anyways. We're done now, she's ready. Load up the tools and we're good to go. Uh, I double checked the coolant, made sure it was all bled as well. So we're good there. And uh, I think the next clip is gonna be us hitting gate on the highway at this point. I'm really excited. Driving home right now and from just a little bit of driving that I've done, I have never ever, ever driven a car that's felt this gripped up before in my life. It is insane. I also have boost back. So from 4,000 RPM now, I have boost. Before, I didn't get any boost until 5,000 because of all those cracks. So listen to this puppy. Yeah, baby, she back. And she is so gripped up, it's insane. I cannot wait for tomorrow. It's going to be so interesting. Damn it, Chris. You told me to invest in Dogecoin. And all I'm seeing right now is a lot of freaking red, mate. A lot of freaking red. Um... <laughs> Anyways, that aside, we're back home. Um, I was gonna go driving at Big Bang, but by the time it was late and I realized I had the Sylvia and the driveway for the parking at Big Bang is definitely not Sylvia friendly, especially with the current fitment. That aside, I decided I wanted to start trying to look at my new sim rig. So for all of you guys that watch me on Twitch, 
you beg me all the time to get the sim rig out. Last time we played on the sim, I had my hydro handbrake thing here. I pushed a hole in the bottom of the desk with it. And then if, look at this, the desk is all broken here now and pulls apart. So yeah, I'd rather not have to buy another one of these from Ikea. We only just did these desks, so that would suck. Anyways, we have a, an actual steel like metal frame now. This came all the way from the US, um, believe it or not. It probably came from China to the US and then from the US back to Asia, well, to Japan. But that aside, this is a full frame with even a seat mount. So we're gonna be putting my Brid gears from the uh, S15 onto this. And I'm gonna try and assemble, like at least get started on assembling this. I know there's a lot in here. I don't know what did or didn't come with it that I'm gonna need, but I thought it'd be kind of cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't see any instructions. Oh, hang on. I found instructions. This is what it's going to look like. This one here with the seat mount. That's cool. It was really cheap. It was only about $170 US. So, should do the job well. I just hope that I can make the shifter on the left hand side, not the right hand side, because this one was kind of like showing it on the right hand side. And where are you going to place it? Right in this corner here. Here? Yeah, with Remuchan right there. Also, Remuchan, if you don't know, she has this awesome Summit pin here. Go get them at <laughs> Summit.net. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to try and assemble this and figure it out at least. Don't make a hole on the wall, okay? I'll try not to. May seems to think that like when I'm going to be driving it, the sim, that my elbow is going to go like through the wall or something. Sam, it's I'm you. Yeah, it's true, it's possible. Yeah. Looks like I don't really need much. Looks like everything's like, um... Oh, here it is. Yeah, everything's pretty much these hand screw in things. So I don't actually need... Oh, there's a few screws and bolts in there, I guess. All right, we're gonna figure it out. We'll, we'll get back to it. So I have to give these guys credit. Their instructions are pretty good. Definitely better than the typical IKEA kind of stuff I'm used to. And uh, all the hardware's there. They even give you every tool that you need to assemble it. So I didn't even have to go and get any tools, which I'm excited about. I've already gotten like the arms kind of mounted here. They go into where the foot pedal is. All my like sim stuffs is up in my cupboard server room. That server there is the home server we built that you guys would have seen on the Summit Raw channel. And uh, that hosts the a bunch of stuff. It, uh, it hosts the, the Okasan bot on the Discord server, um, the Minecraft server that you guys play on, a whole bunch of stuff that you guys, if you're in the Discord, you know about. And that's that server right there. Anyways, back to this. Um, should be done, I think, in like another 10, 15 minutes. It's all pretty straightforward. I'm gonna get to it and I'll show you guys the end product. I'm gonna have this linked in the description too, the one that I bought, because I think like this is a really good budget sim rig and it's gonna prevent you from, you know, breaking your tables and stuff like that. Also, yes, I know I need to do cable management. I know. I'll get around to it when my new rig is sorted out and we'll do it all nice and pretty in RGB and stuff. So for now, it's good. And uh, loving my nano leaves. Just finished assembling the sim frame. It's definitely pretty flimsy, um, but I'm hoping that that will kind of um, uh, be fairly easy to rectify. I think what I can do is just like put a bar across here to stop these two from swaying uh, side to side. And then maybe we could also do another uh, point from this uh, mounting hole here up to there, but um, for $160, I can't really complain and in its current form, it would probably perform okay as well. I just think I'm going to want this thing a lot more sturdy. Um, where the handbrake is currently mounted is definitely not its final resting place. Um, I want that definitely to be a bit lower, but we'll see once we get like a seat and, you know, we'll, able, we'll be able to move this further back and work out where I'm going to be sitting in correlation with the steering wheel and get that all dialed in too because right now like if there was a seat there I would be way too far forward um, so obviously we have all the adjusters here and stuff so this will slide a lot further back and we can work it out from there but yeah this looks good I think it's going to do everything that I need it to for what I'm going to use it for I just uh, need to order some goggles now um, like a VR headset and we should be good. With that guys, I'm gonna wrap up today's video. Give me some advice on the sim and some things that you think I should get. Um, obviously, like I said, it's not like anything too serious and at some point in the future I would like to spend 
a fair bit of money on a really good frame. Um, at that point, we'd probably also be upgrading wheel and all that kind of stuff to like a sequential proper shifter as well. Um, but for now, I think this will be good for a little practice rig. So smash the like button, rise a comment, subscribe, get ready for the next vlog. We will be time attacking tomorrow and filming all of that. First time ever time attacking, first time ever in the S15, set up for grip. There's a lot of firsts tomorrow and I don't doubt it, it's going to be an awesome video. So smash the like button, rise a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out. Jamata.